Hey friends, as you might know, I recently put out a brand new song. It's called Bright. It's the first single off of an upcoming EP, which is out April 8th. It's called Hideaway. You can pre-order it in the link below. And I really wanted to take a moment to break down this song Bright, tell some of the stories behind its creation, go section by section, instrument by instrument. So let's do it. Let's dive in. One of the main instruments featured in this song is this acoustic guitar that I'm going to play for you right here. It's a very special guitar. And the experienced listener might notice that it is a nylon string guitar, sort of a classical style guitar and not a steel string acoustic guitar. And that guitar is really, really special to me because it's actually the guitar that my wife Sarah played when she was a kid. She grew up in Vienna, Austria and had that guitar there. And when our lives combined and we moved in all of our stuff, I realized she had this amazing, amazing guitar and she was kind enough to let me start to write songs on it and record it with it and it plays so well it records so well it's such an inspiring piece and i'm so grateful to have it in my life and so this song is really built around that guitar such a fun sound i just love it so much and then playing in that introduction along with the guitar is this sound which is a synthesizer called the Mellotron. Uh, and the Mellotron is, is a classic. It's this kind of big, upright keyboard synthesizer. And one of the things that it does really well is emulates orchestral instruments. And so this is the flutes setting on the Mellotron. And I turn to that sound very often because I love the vibe. It feels to me almost like an old movie. And there'll be some more Mellotron sounds as we go along. And then getting us into this introduction, I love little sounds that pull us from section A to section B, little transitional sounds. And we've got this thing called the dark guitar swell that puts us right into our first verse. All right, let's keep listening. What would you do if someone actually knew you well? Someone to hear the story you have to tell I've never seen all right a couple things that jump out as we get into this second half of the first verse I want to talk about this instrument called the crumble pad listen to this right here okay so this is a trick that I use a lot and and it's uh maybe a little bit uh tired <laughs> at this point but i love it uh this instrument that i have called the op1 which is made by teenage engineering um it's a small synthesizer with just four knobs but the cool thing is um, as you're playing a sound each of those four knobs has a different function and will manipulate some aspect of the song and there's this one sound in there i can't remember the exact uh pad setting but it's basically like when you when you when you hold a chord if you turn one of the knobs it's almost like you're scrolling through an analog radio and in between stations you get all that static so a lot of times for different kind of transitional components of a song i'll hold out a chord and then kind of turn the knob until i get that kind of radio static um, to kind of give us a transitional sound. And so I used it a few different times in this song. Here's another moment. I really like it. It's kind of obnoxious and fun. Uh, another thing that's kind of uh, getting us into the next part of this verse is this instrument, uh, which I lovingly call the backbeat bag. So my friend Zach Miller did a lot of the drums and the drum programming on this track, and he introduced me to this idea called the backbeat bag which is basically when he travels to a gig, he uh, has shakers and various percussion things in sort of a bag over his shoulder. But the funny thing is that that bag itself becomes an instrument because it's a bag full of instruments. And so by dropping it or hitting it against a table and capturing that sound, you get this sort of like nice crunchy uh, bag sound. And I've turned to that uh, a number of different times. So the crumble pad radio sounds come in on that interlude, a little bit of backbeat bag, and then we're into the next part of our verse. So let's listen. I've never seen somebody quiet like you before. I wanna know about you, so tell me a little more. Okay, so then second half of that verse, we get a little bit of this. Uh, what's called rim clatter where it's basically a, a drumstick on the edge of a floor tom 
kind of playing this loopy, exciting percussion sound. And then also we get some electric bass coming in. And my friend Aaron Fabrini played the electric bass on this. And Aaron just gets the best tone. And I just love what he does. He really brings it to life. Crisp. Yeah, just love that stuff. And then we get into our pre-chorus. Let's listen to this pre-chorus. This is where we get our title of our song, Bright. So tell me a little more. Okay, so what's happening here is that I'm singing kind of in duet style with my good friend Cara Loudon, and we're actually trading vocal phrases. So I'm singing, you, bright, 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 and Cara is singing, are so, are so, are so bright. And so we get this sort of trading vocal phrases vibe, which makes the song feel like kind of wide and gives it some space and some depth and just brings interest to a fairly simple vocal phrase. You are so bright, are so bright, are so bright. And then harmony. You are so bright, are so bright, are so bright. And then sort of the uh, kind of warping sound that brings us into the chorus is actually the last time we sing bright. I copied it over and reversed it and turned it way up and it sounds like this. So we get, you are so bright, are so bright, are so bright, and then that gets us into our chorus. So listen to the way this impacts the transition. Okay, awesome. So a number of things to talk about in this first chorus. So the vocals first. Um, I have kind of a feeble, very weak sounding voice. And so a lot of times if I need to try to create a bigger sound, I layer up my vocals with two or three or four or even more of the exact same performance. So this is actually probably at least a trio of me singing together. I just want to be there when your lonely day is done With some crunch and stuff I just want to help you be all that you will become And I really wanted this chorus to be in high contrast to the verse I wanted it to feel kind of high energy and loud and so this rim kind of that we talked about the sort of stick on the side of a floor tom vibe we copy that into the chorus but add a ton of distortion and crunch to it so we go from this to this It's almost like when you go and see a live show and there's some sort of like really big high energy band and there's like some guy off in the corner just like playing just a drum. Like <laughs> you're not totally sure if he's in the band, if he's an official member, but he's just like, he's just got one drum and he's just going for it. Um, trying to get the crowd pumped up, trying to get people to feel some emotion in their soul. Um, that's kind of the vibe I wanted for the chorus, kind of this big energy groove. And Aaron Fabrini, again, who played bass, uh, had this great idea of running his bass through a guitar pedal um, called the Big Cheese, which is like a fuzz, super crunchy pedal, and just to play long, whole tones uh, in this chorus and give us that kind of huge energy. Check out the Big Cheese. This is wild. Ooh. So that's kind of the basis uh, on which the groove is formulated. It's really just uh, the vocals, the kind of the raucous drums, and then uh, the big cheese for that first part of the chorus. So let's hear just kind of those components and what really makes the first part of this chorus happen in terms of groove. <laughs> There's also these sort of chorus riffs that are, are interspersed into, uh, in between the vocal phrases, and they sound like this. And that's uh, a couple of different guitars uh, all condensed down into one stereo stem. So I played some guitars on this, but then also the incredibly talented uh, Dan Phelps played a bunch of guitars on this. So there's a couple acoustic guitars, a couple electric guitars all summed together. I just wanted to be really crisp and kind of snappy. And it's almost like some 
like a little bit of St. Vincent vibe of just like kind of a high impact, quick, dry guitar. So all those things together give us our chorus. Let's listen one more time. I just want to be there in the lonely day this time. I just want to help you be all that you will become. Speaking of Dan Phelps, guitar player, Dan came up with this riff, Dan played this riff, and it just really, it's like the hook of the whole post-chorus, it's the high energy moment, and I just want to take a moment to highlight this incredible tone and this incredible riff. Woo, that brings us a lot of impact, a lot of joy. And then we've got the crumble pad coming in for this post-chorus as well, where it does a little bit of the radio static and then kind of turns into a kind of a drone. That's me turning those knobs again to kind of get those tones. We've got, um, as well, I think a few elements from the Mellotron. Some strings and some flute in that post-chorus. Again, very cinematic to me, just like it feels like watching some sort of old, sad movie. Uh, and then just one more thing before we move on to the next part of our the song, which is verse 2. I just want to highlight just kind of the, the drum groove itself because I think it's really, really compelling. I think Zach did such a great job building kind of the, the whole vibe of it. One of the things that I really like about it is that I tend to think when I think about drums, I think about huge sounding kick drums um, playing in, in single impact points right on the downbeat, maybe one other time. And I like that this actually has really big live sounds, but then the kick is actually really small and really punchy and the pattern is actually a little bit busy. Uh, and so the way that this uh, kick drum pattern he built helps with the groove to me is just really cool and inspiring. I like that it's a short, punchy sound, and it's got some 16th note energy in it. So all fun stuff. That's kind of what builds our chorus and post-chorus, and now we're moving on into verse 2. We'll start at this post again. Now that we found each other, life has a better tone. I hope we stick together. I hope we change and grow. Awesome. So nothing really new there. We kind of go back to our same components of the verses. We've got that dark guitar swell transitioning us into verse two. And then when we get into this next pre-chorus, we go back into the vocal trading. You are so bright, are so bright. But we get this new guitar part, which is also from Dan Phelps, which is incredible. I'm going to play it for you and then show it in context. I love this part. One of my favorite stems. So fun. So now listen to how that builds the energy as we get into this next pre. I hope we change and grow. happening. Now we're through our, both of our choruses, both of our posts, both of our verses, and uh, if you're a songwriter or a musician or you know songwriters and musicians, a lot of time you'll hear people talk about how bridges are like the hardest thing or the most frustrating thing sometimes to try to write because if you get your verse, you can kind of copy the same melody over. If you get your chorus, sometimes it's an exact copy over. Um, and the bridge is a, a new component, and I sometimes really dread getting to the bridge because I oftentimes don't know what to do. So I took a very lazy uh, way out on this bridge, which is I made a bridge that is a single line. Uh, sometimes they call a bridge a middle eight, like it's a, a new section of eight bars. And I, I just didn't have that in me apparently and just did what I haven't done in any song, which is a, a one line bridge. And then it goes into another thing that I'm going to talk about in a second. But listen to this bridge. This is this is lazy. 
And the time that we've been given doesn't feel like enough. Okay. The time that we've been given doesn't feel like enough. Uh, it felt right for the story, and I just didn't feel like I had anything else to say, so it's a one-line bridge. And then it goes into a section that I have not utilized before in a song, which is a guitar solo. I don't know why uh, I felt compelled to do that. Um, I am not a guitar soloist. Uh, I, I play guitar with sort of feel and intuition. I'm not trained on it and I am the last person you want in the band uh, because if you look over me and say hey t take it away take a nice solo um, it's not going to sound good it's going to sound really bad uh, in fact and you can you can tell that this guitar solo is me because the almost the entire guitar solo is one note I'm quite comfortable staying on one note that works out well for me uh, it's it's a comforting place and so this is the first song I have with a guitar solo and here's the solo that I, I managed to play <laughs> instead of a proper bridge we get one line bridge and then a one note guitar solo but there's lots of cool things going on uh, in this guitar solo which you might not notice because of how brutal and assaulting that tone is there's some really cool uh, elements underneath it and this is from Dan Phelps and he called it aliens this is happening during the solo crazy he gets these sound on on electric guitars I don't actually understand how but here's another one uh, this is a cool sound he has amazing Wow so all these sounds together are happening underneath the solo. Um, I'm just drowning them out because of how brutally I'm playing it. So fun. Okay, so let's hear this bridge into this guitar solo. And the time that we've been given doesn't feel like enough. Okay, so coming into this last chorus, so we've got the solo, we've got the down chorus, and then we've got the sort of quiet post that builds us back into what I've called the alternate chorus. Because we're getting a little bit repetitive in the end, I wanted to bring a little bit of interest into the kind of final moments of the song and change the melody. So instead of the, I, I just want to be there when your lonely day is done, the melody gets altered into this. I just want to be there when your lonely day is done. I just want to help you be all that you will become. Just something different, a little change of, uh, change of pitch change of scenery and then we're into our last post chorus so those are actually all the the primary components of the song so again this is my brand new song it's called bright it's out streaming everywhere you listen to music you can also pre-order uh the ep for which this is the lead single um this song was written by me it has electric guitar by dan phelps electric bass by aaron fabrini drum programming by zach miller vocals from Kara loudon uh, the final version of the song was mixed by Andrew Morey and mastered by Huntley Miller. I hope you'll give it a listen, and I'm excited to uh, share the rest of the EP with you. So thanks for tuning in for this, and we'll do it again soon. I just